Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the daily chart of gold on netdania.com. And there's going to be three main takeaways I want you to see in this chart. The first one actually is, uh, I don't even need to draw it in here because the actual price line on netdania, which is this uh, series of dashes here, uh, that line is the current price at 1192.860. So I want you to keep this chart in mind when we flip over to the silver chart to show you the uh, where we are relatively speaking. I'm not going to put I'm not going to superimpose a silver chart over the gold chart, but just have you remember this picture here. So you can see that the the main point you want to take away from that dashed line is that we are already in major overhead resistance area. You can see the length of time that this overhead resistance has been in place. It's been in place since uh, July of 2013. That is the line. We are challenging it right now. Now, the other thing to notice on this chart is that the volume spike on the daily, again, these are daily volumes, and again, this is net Danny of volume, so that's uh, whatever that is, uh, a combination of, we're still not really sure, um, LBMA volume, um, cash market volume, we don't really know. But whatever this volume is, it has a daily record. You can see that this is the largest amount of daily volume that has ever been put in, period, in history that we know of on this chart. Now, is that bullish? Actually, no. Uh, based on past president, that's actually bearish. Now, uh, that's interesting that uh, as far as these two spikes, those don't align with that past bearishness. Those actually are bullish, and this one could be too. And it's not going to take us a long time to find out whether this is bullish volume. Because the way that volume tops work, let me, I think I have my arrows here. Um, the way that volume tops work is that uh, when the price has gone very, very high, very, very fast, there's a tremendous amount of buyers pushing it up at new high prices. There's also a tremendous amount of sellers coming in. And so you, you see huge volume on spikes. And uh, that's very, very common. Whether they're down spikes or whether they're up spikes, you see huge, huge volume. So... Uh, just based on volume, there'd be probably about an 80% chance that this is a inter intermediate or interim top that will come down from here. But there is that small chance that it's not. So that's the second thing I wanted to show you was this volume spike. The third thing I wanted to show you is the violation of this trend line. Now, trend lines are valid. I've drawn them for a very long time. They're much more valid in legitimate markets as opposed to manipulated markets, but they're also valid in manipulated markets. And what I want you to notice is the first breakout, we know what the top was in, in gold. It wasn't quite here, but it was very near there. Um, and you can see that uh, this one is around 1770. I think the top was 1900 or something, but we're just drawing it from this point. And you can see this first trend line we drew in here seems like a, a really good trend line. You can see it came in and had touch point, touch point, touch point, touch point, touch point, and then we get a breakout on uh, a new, on a higher low, and uh, it looks like this is it. It's breaking out, but it didn't. It failed. And you can see it failed. It made a new low, and that's where we get our second line, and you can see that one's fairly valid as well. Touch point touch point, touch point, touch point. This one is interesting because we actually get a touch point at a bottom. And uh, so that looks like that's really going to be the real deal. It broke out of it. It came back and tested it. But nope, it failed. And it comes up again and goes into new lows again. And that brings us to our next trend line. You can see this one, though, is really just touch point and touch point, uh, maybe three. And then the last one that we have is the one we're on right now. And that's really just two touch points and then where we've gotten through it. So 
I want you to notice that the touch, the touch points on these trend lines actually are decreasing. And will this pattern remain? Uh, will we go lower and then just have a trend line that's one touch point, or is this the big one? Now, I'm going to look at silver and try to show you why I think this is the big one. And let's just do a comparison here on the silver chart because I wanted you to see. So based on the, the gold chart that we looked at, we're still looking at that price of about 1850 to be in a relative uh, position to what gold is doing right now. You can see that silver is way, way, way below that. And we'll, we'll change over to the, the freehand lines. I'm not going to draw in all of the um, touch point uh, trend lines that we did with gold, but I'm just going to draw in one kind of freehand here to show you where we currently are. And it's really just a two touch point chart, one back here and one right there. The same sort of thing holds with silver, the touch points are lessening. Uh, nothing like the volume that we had on gold. But as I pointed out before, with gold, we are actually in the process of testing this resistance area. With silver, we're nowhere close. We have to run three bucks with silver to even get there. So I wanted to talk about why I believe this time is different and this may be the big one. Before we do that, I wanted to look at this issue where people are talking about the RCM and, and these spots. Now, this is a new coin coming out. People are asking me about this coin and I have RCM coins. The, the last ones I bought were Olympic Memorial coins. I think that was the two, 2008-2010. slash So I, I think the last time I bought anything RCM was in 2008, about eight years ago. And my coins are spotted. Now, I started to notice that when I went through the coins maybe six months to a year afterwards. They definitely were not spotted when I stacked the coins. And uh, it, for those of you who purchased rolls from the RCM, uh, they come in those um, white plastic tubes with yellow caps, at least the ones I did, did. And they're 25 to a roll. But the same issue that you have with other bullion coins is the jangling. And uh, that just that jangling issue alone was enough to uh, get me on board with the Perth uh, Perth coins, whether they were Lunars. Uh, initially, it, I was uh, collecting Koalas, Kookaburros, and Lunas, Lunars, and now I'm exclusively Lunars. But all of those coins were in the individual sealed plastic coins uh, cases for about the same. Now, for my Canadians, I started purchasing the coin cases and then just gave up. So, there's the jangling issue, and when they're jangling in that coin roll, they do get some scratches. But a much more important issue is that spots issue. And just to show you on one thread here of their official reply, this is an old thread. This has been going on for a long time. Uh, this is from Gold is Money 2. The following is an email letter from an RCM distributor concerning the problem. To summarize, the RCM's position on milk spots on their silver coins is don't like it buy something else. Hello, here's a short explanation. We just had a meeting with the men about 10 days ago. The white stains or milk spots result from the planchet flan cleaning and preparation process. Some silver maple leaf coins have them, SMLs, some do not. This is the mint's official position. The coins are bullion coins. They are not collector coins. They're sold as one ounce of silver. The mint knows that there is a problem. The problem has existed since 1988 when SML coin was first introduced. The mint says there is nothing that they can do about the problem. Our experience is that some SML have them and some do not. We do not know what we're going to get when we open a box of 500 ounces of silver that came from the mint. We have to take what we get. We cannot return them. We do not have the time to sort them, etc. We ship out what we get per our terms of our invoices. We do charge a restocking fee for returned bullion items. I'm sorry about the problem, but we have no control over it. I hope this helps. And that's uh, John Weekelman. So 
I haven't done extensive research on this. I just know that when I got milk spotted coins, I kept them, of course, and wrote it down to experience. Now, I actually happened to purchase. It was a very interesting experience for me, and that was one of the things that really educated me about uh, semi-numismatic coins, was that in 2008, during the fall bottom, I actually purchased uh, Buffalo Rounds, I purchased RCMs, and I purchased Perth Mint. And I watched those coins over the course of the next years and watched their performance. And that was the thing more than anything else that convinced me to go with the Perth Mint. So that's the issue with these coins. Um, I'll probably never buy another RCM coin. Now, I personally believe that the, that the issue is probably the four nines. If you didn't notice, these RCM coins are indeed four nines. Well, this one, look at this one here. This one's five nines. Uh, well, I guess that's the one ounce gold. Uh, one, two, three, four, four nines on the silver. So my best estimate is that the spots are actually because of the four nines. The reason I say that is because my coins, I looked at my coins when I got them. They were not milk spotted. But I went and looked at them again after the, I'd had them for six months to a year or so, and they were milk spotted. So I'm thinking it's the four nines, but I can't say for sure. Um, definitely something can be too pure. Um, gold, we know that, uh, you know, the most pure carat gold, I'm not sure what it is, 24 carat, is that correct? Uh, is, uh, is useless as jewelry if it's too pure because it's too soft. And that may very well be the case with these uh, silver coins. They're just too pure. Uh, we know that the U.S. made their coins is 90%, so 10% was not silver. And those had to be durable. They had to be coinage. So there, I think there's probably something to that argument. So let's get to this silver issue and why I think this could be the big one. And this is... Um, this is Wealth Watchman on Silver Doctors. Now, again, I don't uh, put a lot of stock in in everything that is said about the the Comex inventories, and this is something that touches upon the Comex inventories. Now, ultimately, I think that that will be uh, not just Comex inventories, but probably LBMA inventories, even more importantly. But I want to show you why I think that that this is may be the, the time where this is coming true. And it, it's not based on these numbers. You can see here Wealth Watchman says the clock is ticking in silver. Ladies and gentlemen, for months I've written about how the diminishing price supply in silver coupled with fresh record demand will lead to a religious experience for the market riggers. On Saturday, I did an interview with Wall Street for Main Street on the topic as well. Well, in the last few days, the downward spiral of comic silver ounces has turned into a gigantic plummet, a rout of 2011 proportions. Just take a look at the warehouse numbers for Friday. One glance and you'll instantly understand something is very wrong in the silver scene. And this is the chart here. Uh, silver chaos one. Well, the links aren't working. I noticed this was happening with Wealth Watchman's stuff. Um, so I can't give you the chart here. Some of you can probably find out where that is. But uh, like I said, I don't put a lot of stock into the Harvey Organ type uh, COMEX reported numbers because they're just, they can't be trusted. Uh, but what I do put a lot of stock in is this silver, uh, silver cycle that I covered on a video, I don't remember when it was, a number of months ago. I did a video called Silver Cycle. And the main point of this video was that uh, from my experience and the many, many years that I've stacked silver going back to even my childhood many, many decades ago, is that the coin stores who buy silver from you, especially the junk, uh, they pay a little bit different for the silver dollars because there's a little bit percentage difference there. By and large, for the most part, uh, people take junk silver into the coin stores. Coin stores pay you a uh, price based on spot, a little bit below, a little bit above, depending on what the market is. Uh, they 
give you your cash, take your silver, th throw it in a box. They don't have time. These are busy people. They don't have time to sort through the coins, look for numismatics um, sometimes, but for the most part, no. They just throw them in a box, throw them in a bag, and when they get enough, say a thousands and thousands of ounces, they will send them off to a smelter and they will send it off based on that spot price, uh, give or take uh, a, a little bit. And those coins will go and be melted down and turned into uh, those thousand ounce bars, those bars that you see traded on the comics. Now, as I pointed out in that Silver Cycle video, that once you see a big, big premium for junk silver over spot, then that means that silver cycle is broken. So you can see very interestingly here, uh, we have a bunch of X's for the junk silver. We really only have two prices coming in here. So we'll take the lower one. You can see that's 1352. And we know that on that's a hundred uh, bag. So we know we need to divide by 71.5 because of that 90% purity. And that gives us $18.90 an ounce. So we're talking $18.90 an ounce when silver is trading at $15.35 an ounce. So we're talking about $3.50 above spot that junk silver is selling for. So there is no way that uh, if you're a coin dealer, you're going to turn around and send that to be melted at $15.30 when you can turn around and sell it for $18.90. And so ever since I did that video update, Silver Cycle, this cycle is broken. This is why this is different. This is why this could be the big one. Every other time here, and I'm not going to draw them all in, but all the breakouts, well, let's just draw them in on silver real quick here. All of the tests of the trend line and the potential breakouts, we've had so many of them where we thought this was the rally and then it wasn't the rally. We thought this time, this is it, the bottom is in. And you can see there's so many there, but this one could be the big one. And the main reason is not because of the technicals on this chart, but because the silver cycle has never recovered this time around. And we'll talk to you next time.